In this video, we will demonstrate the REST request node that has been provided in IBM Integration Bus version 10.006. In previous Integration Bus version 10 fix packs, capability has been provided which allows you to create a REST API using an external Swagger document or creating it from scratch. This capability was extended to allow you to push REST APIs to API Connect so that you can secure the API or define a service level agreement for the API. Now in IIB version 10.006, a new REST request node has been provided which allows you to easily interact with an external service through its REST API. A pair of async REST request and async REST response nodes have been provided if you need to interact with an external service asynchronously. In this demonstration, we are going to use the sample REST API customer database that is provided as a tutorial in IIB. After importing the project and deploying the REST API, we can see a link in the web user interface for the location of the Swagger document which describes the REST API. We can copy and paste the URL to the Swagger for the customer database REST API. We have two simple client message flows. One flow will query the database to get the details for a customer and the other flow will add the details for a new customer to the database. Both flows read an XML message from a file. A JSON message will be sent by the REST request node in each flow to the customer database service and the JSON response will be written to a file. When we drag and drop the REST request node onto the flow editor, we can see a wizard which allows us to choose the location of the Swagger document which is used to configure the REST request node. We can select a Swagger document from the workspace, file system or specify a specific URL. If we specify a URL, the Swagger document will be downloaded and stored in the project containing the REST request node at the end of the wizard. The Swagger document can be JSON or YAML format. The wizard now shows us the operations that are available through the REST API. Let's choose the Get Customer operation. The REST request node is now configured for the Get Customer operation in the Get Customer message flow. The Swagger document has been downloaded and can be viewed. Any parameters that can be provided are listed in the Parameters section on the Request tab. In this case, a path parameter called Customer ID is required. We can specify an XPath or ESQL expression such that the value can be taken from a location in the Request Message tree. We can optionally set the value of the parameter in the local environment. In this demonstration, we will specify a location in the input message tree, which contains the ID that we want to look up. We can see that no transformation is needed before the REST request node for this operation. We can wire up the out and error terminal from the REST request node so we can see if a response containing the customer details have been successfully returned or if an error was returned from the service. After downloading the Swagger, a REST API catalog is automatically created in the project by the wizard. If you open the REST API catalog, you can see the operations provided by the service. We can drag and drop the Add Customer operation onto the Add Customer message flow, and it will create and configure a REST request node for that operation. Currently, the operation does not have any parameters specified for it. We need to define where to get the customer details which are needed in the request body. So we'll add a mapping node and map the fields that are needed. In the map, we can use the model for the XML message as the input and we can use the model for the JSON message for the output. The model for the JSON message has been taken from the Swagger document that was downloaded previously. The graphical data mapper has been extended in 10.006 
such that it can handle schema files in YAML format as well as JSON format. Previously, only JSON schema files were supported. We are now ready to test the get customer message flow. We can use the flow exerciser to send in a message. We'll initially send an XML message to the flow, which has an ID specified in it, which currently does not exist. We can see that an error has been returned by the service. The content of the message, propagated from the error terminal of the REST request node, informs me that no customer details could be found for the ID that was specified in the request. If we open the written destination part of the local environment in the output message tree, we can see the request that was sent and it shows that the ID of 9 was specified. We can now run the add customer message flow and pass in the input XML message. We can see that the message has been processed. The message has been transformed from XML to JSON. The request message has been sent successfully to the customer database service and a response has been propagated from the out terminal of the REST request node. The message detail show that the customer was successfully added to the database. If we now rerun the test for the get customer message flow, we can see that the response is now propagated from the out terminal of the REST request node. The message details show that the customer details were found and sent back in the response. The activity log can be viewed in the web user interface. In the activity log, we can see the information for every operation that was invoked. The log entry shows the operation name, the HTTP method, the URL that was used, the HTTP status code of the response, and the total time that was taken for the response. The activity log can be used to quickly identify badly performing REST APIs that are having a detrimental impact on message flow performance. We have shown the new REST request node, which is part of IBM Integration Bus 10006. The REST request node can be used to invoke operations and can specify parameter values. The Swagger document is used to configure the REST request node and the Swagger can be in JSON or YAML format. The REST API category has been added to the toolkit which lists the operations that are defined in the Swagger. The new REST request node allows you to easily interact with external services without needing to configure extra nodes in your message flow.